So here we're going to discuss signal power and signal energy. And we'll start with an example of electric circuits. Uh, I think you'll recall that the power of an electric circuit is the current times the voltage. And if this is over a resistor, then because V equals IR, that's the same as the square of the voltage divided by the resistance or the square of the current times the resistance. So the power is the square of the voltage. If it was a unit resistor, one ohm resistor, the power would be the square of the voltage. It would also be the square of the current. And let's think about that in signal terms. That's, that's one example where the power is the square. So let's think about that in signals. This might be the signal of me talking now into the microphone and the microphone is oscillating and vibrating and the surface of the microphone is going in and out as the sound waves are hitting the microphone so it's going from a positive to a negative polarity. And we would be interested to know uh, what's the power of that signal. What's the power of my voice impacting on the microphone? If I talk louder, you would intuitively say that that's got more power. Uh, talk softer, less power. Um, so how do we actually characterize that in general for signals? Um, they're not something that's going through a resistor, uh, so we're not measuring it in terms of watts. Although if it was to be uh, the microphone example converted into an electric signal and going through an electric circuit uh, to be sampled and stored, um, like it is in this uh, video, then it would be going through an electric circuit and there would be power in those components of that electric circuit. But just as a signal, we still can have a concept of power. And we're going to do it essentially by uh, defining it to be the square of the value. Okay, so just in a similar way to the how it is uh, in electric circuits. Okay, so another one might be a simple uh, sine wave here in a, a power supply, AC power supply, uh, voltage supply. Uh, the polarity changes from positive to negative to positive to negative. Um, so the value is going from positive to negative, but the power is always positive. So we've got here uh, inst uh, various different concepts. So instantaneous power, instantaneous power of the signal, if this signal is xt, is defined as xt squared. So this is what we call instantaneous power. And for the sine wave example, if we're thinking of signals and waveforms, which I always encourage people to do, uh, that's the square of this signal. So the square of this signal is something that is always positive. Well, that negative gets squared, which means it becomes a positive. And so this is the, pe the power of the signal, xt squared. Okay, now energy is the addition of power over time. So we have the same concept in signals. So energy is the integral. So signal energy, we can call it signal energy, equals, uh, is over a period of time. Over a period of time, let's say between t1 and t2. So it's over a delta period between t2 and t1. Uh, so this is going to equal in mathematical terms the integrate from t1 to t2 of xt squared. So this is the signal energy over a period of time. And when we look at this over here, what does that mean in terms of our waveform? Well, it means we are, uh, over the period of time that we're interested in, uh, whatever that happens to be, let's say that's t1 and let's say this is t2, then we're adding up the area under the instantaneous power signal. And that area there, the area, is the signal energy. Okay, so what about signals which uh, go for a longer period of time than this? Uh, let's say total signal energy. So the total signal energy would be exactly this expression where you just add up the area from negative infinity all the way to infinity. Okay, that's the total signal energy would be this integral from negative infinity to infinity. 
Now in the case of the, the uh, periodic waveform, this sine wave, let's think about that for a minute. This sine wave goes forever to negative infinity and positive in infinity and these, uh, this waveform, the square, will go forever. This area will just keep adding up. So for periodic waveforms, the signal energy, the total signal energy, would be infinite. Infinity it would be an infinite total signal energy. So because we can't uh, sort of uh, conceive that, uh, it goes for infinity, uh, we define another term, which we call the average signal power. And the average signal power is the average of the power over a period. Okay, so if a period is capital T, if this was capital T here, capital T, this period capital T, this is 2T, 2 capital T, then the average signal power would be the add up the area over a period. Okay, so we add up the en energy over a period, uh, which is the area here over a complete period, and divide by that period. And so for a signal which has infinite power, it's, uh, if it's periodic, we actually talk about more in terms of, in fact, we talk about the average power. So here's one period. That's the area of the power over the period. And we take that area and we divide by the period. 